The oldest apple garden in North America lies in the valley called Annapolis, Nova Scotia. Fruit trees stretch the length of the valley in a continuous belt for 100 miles, sheltered by mountains on either side and freshened by the salt sea breezes. This part of Canada is in the same latitude as Normandy, where apple years before there were orchards on this continent. It is said when Acadians from Normandy settled here in 1606, they found twisted wild crab apple trees, but they brought with them apple seeds and seedlings. And history has it that they planted the first orchards in North America and called the apples Norman French. In 1688, there were 2,000 trees in the orchards. These trees, later cultivated by the new English settlers, were the foundation of the fruit industry of the British Commonwealth and the chief industry of the Annapolis Valley. Villages grew into busy towns as the apple orchards extended further and further through the countryside. In the early spring, the gray orchards give the valley a somber, sleepy look. Time for trees. For cleaning up the orchards. removing old and unprofitable varieties of apples so that new and better varieties may be planted. But a quicker way than planting is to use a healthy rootstock of an unprofitable variety of tree. Orchardists cut away the branches and leave only the framework. Then they cut scions of a desired variety of apples and graft these into the limbs of the old tree. They wax the graft for protection, and in half the time it takes a new orchard to grow, these trees will be producing excellent fruit. All through the season, from early spring until early fall, they spray the trees to keep the fruit free from insects, so better quality apples will mature. But the Annapolis Valley has a natural ally, moisture, and they say the tangy sea air gives an added flavor to the apples. Blossom time is festival time in the valley. In blossom time, the valley is very gay. The towns are decorated to match the color surrounding them. And for three full days, there are parades, games, and festivities. On Apple Blossom Day, the children from valley towns gather at Kentville to take part in a parade of their own. For days, they have been decorating doll carriages and bicycles into miniature floats. There will be prizes for the lucky ones. But the most exciting event of all is the grand parade to escort the chosen Queen of the Apple Blossoms Festival to her coronation. consecutive years, princesses from ballet towns have assembled at festival time, and one of them is chosen Queen of the Apple Blossoms. She receives tokens as a symbol of the goodwill of her people, and is crowned Queen Annapolisa to reign a full year over her apple kingdom. Afterwards, the queen leaves for Grand Pre, where thousands gather to welcome her. Here, over 200 years ago, Acadian farmers once tilled the soil, planted their orchards and the old willow trees. And the queen, on her coronation day, does not forget the Acadian origin of her kingdom and the story of Evangeline, made immortal now by Longfellow. As the festival celebrations draw to a close, the queen wanders them.
Even as she looks over the beautiful valley, she sees the busy season of cultivation underway. Most Nova Scotia fruit farmers have other crops as well. And while the fruit is ripening, put in good crops of grain. Many have breeding stock, beef or dairy herds. And the rich marshlands provide excellent hay. But apples are the chief crop of the valley. And as the young fruit develops, it is watched closely. Thinning is important when the apples are forming, for apples bunched together do not form evenly, and blemished apples are unwanted. So a better and higher quality crop is assured if these are thinned out. When the apples mature, thousands of barrels are needed for the harvesting, and small sawmills in the valley are busy turning out barrel staves and covers, and shaping the wood they send out to workmen who assemble the barrels in their home workshops. Again, the valley has changed its color. The orchards are red with fruit as the seasonal pickers come to help with the harvest. In order to prevent bruising, the fruit is carefully handled from the moment the apples are picked until they are finally landed at the cold storage plant. The trend in Nova Scotia now is for the production of highly colored and high quality apples such as Delicious, Macintosh and Crimson Gravensteins. But this was not always the case. Nova Scotia apples were exported great distances. Lack of refrigeration made it impractical to grow choice dessert varieties, so winter apples that could be stored and shipped under natural conditions were grown instead. They made up the bulk of the export crop and were packed and shipped out in barrels. Today, colorful quality apples may be landed in the most distant markets due to cold storage and refrigeration. This has been responsible for a complete changeover in the Nova Scotia apple industry. And that is why many of the orchards are being grafted over rapidly with the new choice varieties. The method of packaging has also changed. Now when the apples are brought into the cold storage plant, they are run over a grading table. The smaller apples are culled out. Some of these are dried and flaked. Some are made into apple pie filler, some into apple sauce, some into tangy apple juice. But the choicest of the crop, graded, hand-picked, individually wrapped and attractively boxed, take their place in domestic and foreign markets. So apples, introduced first in North America by the early Acadians, have brought wealth, health, beauty and romance to the province of Nova Scotia.